Hello, I'm Grace, Communications Coordinator at Ann Arbor's Office of Sustainability and Innovations, and welcome to Greenlight, where we dig into sustainability in Ann Arbor with the residents who are envisioning, creating, and establishing a sustainable and equitable future for our community. Supporting these goals and presenting this series is A20, the city's plan, framework, vision, and associated actions for creating and implementing a just transition to carbon neutrality community-wide by the year 2030. Today, we're shining the green light on Director of the Office of Sustainability and Innovations, Dr. Missy Stoltz. Welcome to the show, Missy. Hey, Grace, thank you for having me. Absolutely. To start us off, give us the elevator pitch of who you are and what you do. You bet. So I am, as you noted, lucky enough to be the city's first sustainability and innovations director. And in that role, I get to work with folks like yourself <laughs> and many others to help us figure out how our community is going to achieve that beautifully audacious, aggressive, and scientifically necessary goal of carbon neutrality by 2030. That That's it. Great and succinct pitch. Thank, Thank you. you. Perfect. Okay. I understand there's a vote coming up November 5th, 2024 in Ann Arbor where residents will be asked if the city charter shall be amended to authorize the city to establish, construct, own, and operate an opt-in sustainable energy utility. Give me the high-level overview of what this is and what this means. Absolutely. So the proposal is exactly what you just said. That's what voters are going to see verbatim on the ballot. It would amend the charter to create a, this optional totally optional, opt-in, you have to choose to take service from said service, utility that is only authorized to provide renewable energy and efficiency services to residents. So think solar on your roof with an energy storage system. Think uh, share geothermal with your neighbors. Imagine a microgrid where you and I as neighbors can actually share power back and forth. Or deep energy efficiency work to help make our homes safer, healthier, and more comfortable. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> What services could an SEU provide? Yeah, so I, I mentioned some of the services before, but I think just to kind of dive a little more deeply, for example, when the grid goes out, we know we have a pretty unreliable grid and there's a lot of investment that needs to be made into that grid. So when I say grid, look out your window and you see lines. They might be in your backyard, they might be in your front yard, they might be across the street, but we have this big electrical grid. That grid is pretty vulnerable. A storm moves through, storms are happening more frequently, they're more intense than what we've experienced before. A tree comes down, that line goes down, you lose power and your neighbors lose power. Well, a few years ago, we invested in my home in solar and energy storage. So when that grid goes down, we don't lose power, right? And that's the concept behind the sustainable energy utility is how do we make investments that help us reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, but inherently help us improve resilience and the reliability of our power supply so that we can be safe in our homes, so that critical medical devices can still be powered even when disaster strikes. So you can preserve your food. It's really expensive to lose power and lose all those groceries. And so we want to create a system that really kind of aligns with the values that we hold of sustainability, equity, and a resilient, reliable power system. And that's what the SEU is striving to do. That's fantastic, enhancing both the sustainability of our community, but also the health and comfort and safety, it sounds like. Yeah, and I want to lean in also to the equity element of this. So I am lucky enough to have solar and storage, but we could afford solar and storage. We had money aside. We had a credit rating that allowed us to take on some debt to go ahead and pay for that system. And that's wonderful. And we have programs that folks probably know about, like Solarize, to help people and the uh, kind of on their own get solar. But not everyone can do that. Not everyone has that capital up front or has a credit score that the banks are going to give them a good interest rate to go ahead and purchase renewables. The concept of the SEU means everyone can have access. So the utility would own those solar panels, that energy storage system or battery is the most traditional mechanism we think about from storage. The utility would own those and would install them on your home or your business if you choose to opt in and you just pay like you pay your bill today. So you don't have to have 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars worth of upfront capital. You actually can just subscribe and our modeling shows pay less than what you pay today for your, for your energy. Wow. Well, I really appreciate you highlighting the, the equity of this. I think that's really important. Uh, my next question is, why an SEU? But I feel like you've already started to get into that, but uh, continue. Why an SEU? There's a few reasons I would point to. We've talked about the reliability. We know reliability is a pain point for many of us here in the community, and we know our grid needs a lot of work. 
our grid is also inherently vulnerable. A big centralized electric system, and what I mean by that is think uh, miles and miles away, you've got this generation plant. And then you've got hundreds to thousands of miles of transmission moving that energy generated over here uh, into our Ann Arbor boundaries. And then you've got distribution that steps that down into your home. That system, anywhere on that system, if it gets disrupted, it cascades right through. And so you can have lack of access to reliable power because of something at generation, transmission, or distribution. Now, distribution does tend to be the most vulnerable. But what if we don't lean into that system anymore? What if we start thinking about distributed systems? So um, I think about this. Uh, my street has about 20 homes. If we all have a shared system where we're generating solar, uh, we're sharing it through batteries, we have small scale distribution between our homes, and a tree hits the next street over, we don't lose power because our distribution system is small scale. You can still be connected to the big grid, big G grid, and have power coming from that. But this just provides a source of power that is way more resilient and reliable for residents. And oh, by the way, it happens to be clean, so it aligns with the A20 goals and objectives we're striving for. That's fantastic. Give me some examples. How would this be different from what we have now? Yeah, so the primary things to think about are right now our electric grid is powered with a lot of different sources. There's a lot of natural gas, also fossil gas is really what we call it in our office. There's uh, nuclear that's on that system. There's coal that's still on that system. And so the electrons that are flowing into the space we're in right now are probably not clean electrons. The SEU, Sustainable Energy Utility, would only be authorized to generate electrons powering these lights, for example, with renewable energy. So it can't go out and invest in fossil gas. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be authorized by the voters to do that. So it changes the generation profile. And then I've spent quite a bit of time thinking and talking here today about the role of resilience and reliable power. That is the heart of the SEU. So uh, a traditional home, let's just say it's, it's your home, would have, if you subscribed, again, this is optional. No one has to take service, and no one pays for service unless they take service. So if you subscribe to the SEU and I do not, I do not pay. You, you only pay for what you take. That's important. But in this case, you would have two bills. You've got solar on your roof, and you've got storage, thanks to the SEU, and you've got your traditional grid connection. So you're first in. You're paying for all of the power you're using from the SEU. You're paying that bill. And then if you need more, you still have the grid connection. right? So you're still paying that bill. What's different is when that grid goes down because of a tree damage, animal damage, someone runs a car into a pole and takes out power. Sadly, that does happen you still have the SEU providing power. Now, it may not provide 100% of the energy that you need, but it might be providing 60%, and that sure is enough to you know, power those medical devices or whatever else you might need. Yeah, thank you for explaining that. And I did want to circle back. Um, something that I've heard, a word that I've heard mentioned with the SEU is supplemental. And is yes. that what you mean when you have the two here? Yeah, that's right. So it doesn't totally replace the existing system. Now, it could, depending on your use profile and how you stack the different investments, but it is designed to be supplemental. And one example I think about a lot, this has always been enabled in Michigan to have a supplemental utility. But if you think about the 1900s, when we didn't have distributed energy resources like solar, that would have meant that you have poles on one side of the street for a utility and poles on the other side of the street running utility. And those economics don't work. We're not talking about that kind of a system. We're talking about a supplemental utility that really, really focuses on generating clean energy. Moving those electrons isn't actually the number one priority. It's generating them and using them at the point of generation. That's why we talk about behind the meter, on your roof, on a business in town. They are using that energy first, and then if there's excess, there's small scale distribution. Think of like a small line between that business and the next door, and they're sharing those electrons in that way. So it's it's actually quite simple uh, and elegant, but it has only been economically and technically possible in perhaps the last decade, thanks to massive invest investments in, in renewables and distribution technology. Wow, thank you, thank you for explaining that. Um, what services might an SEU offer at the start? Mm -hmm. At the very beginning, the bread and butter core of the SEU are solar and energy storage systems, as well as energy efficiency work. So we, it would be, if authorized by the voters, an electric utility that provides electric service. So it has to it has to generate electrons and 
produce, sell those electrons. So that's the bread and butter, uh, what we can focus on. And I'm actually pretty excited. An initial assessment showed our community uses about 440, 450 megawatts of electricity right now. The SEU just using rooftop capacity, if everyone subscribed and participated, we could generate 400 megawatts. Wow. So we're pretty close. And then start thinking about carports and other things we can invest in. And that's not even assuming we did energy efficiency to lower that number. But candidly, we also expect electrification, more electric vehicles, changing your fossil gas appliances out to clean burning appliances. So we expect that number to probably stabilize around 450. Wow. Wow. That's big. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot of clean energy. I mean, imagine how beautiful it would be to be able to look out on roofs and just see a sea of clean energy that is local, right? Those are local jobs, local people installing those resources. That's a resilient system. That's our system that we own and operate as a public utility. That's pretty powerful, and it, it gets me excited. <laughs> Quite literally powerful. It's powerful. <laughs> yeah. So do I have to get or have solar panels on my roof to participate in the SEU? You do not. So there's two different ways to think about this. If you happen to already have solar panels, you could still participate in the SEU through the, those energy efficiency programs, through the appliance electrification programs. Those would be uh, things where we would come in, use something like our home energy advisor. We would help understand what your next steps are, your strategic unique opportunities. And then we could work with you to identify what it would look like to implement those solutions and what your payments would look like into that program. So that's if you already have solar. And then if you do already have solar, once we get a density of your neighbors participating in the SEU, we can start to build that microgrid, which means you're starting to share power. So you could actually potentially share power and sell it to the SEU and get a profit from the solar that you're not using, wow. which is pretty great. Now, if on the other hand, you don't have solar panels and maybe you have a beautiful tree right, that is providing just incredible benefits, stormwater benefits, shade, ecosystems. you got to keep that tree. That community needs that tree, but your roof isn't a strong contender for solar. You can still participate in all of the other programs that we mentioned, those energy efficiency, electrification programs. You could do storage. You can still store energy for when the power goes out, so you at least have some resilience. And then once that microgrid comes into play again, now you can actually be the beneficiary of additional power being generated in your neighborhood. I understand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Who can join the SEU and when and where can residents join? Great question. So the SEU mirrors, if authorized in November, would mirror the footprint of our existing electric franchise, which means anyone that lives or works in the city of Ann Arbor is eligible. So if you're in a township island, if you're outside the city, you would not be eligible for the SEU. But it is optional, so any business could participate in the city, any resident, any house of worship, nonprofit could subscribe to participate in the SEU. And if you're excited, uh, we do have a wait list right now that's available. And you can sign up for that wait list and find out more as we figure out what happens in November. Fantastic. Yeah. What is the difference between an SEU and a traditional municipal electric utility? Yeah, it's a good question. So traditional municipalization or a traditional uh, municipal electric utility is something that the city is also exploring. The fundamental difference is an MEU is about taking over what exists out the window. So all of those things that we see when we drive around, we would basically be offering to buy all of that infrastructure and all of the things needed to operate that infrastructure. And we would become the 24-7, 365 days a year provider of electricity. That is a pathway uh, that the city is going to be commissioning a second study to really understand the deep economics of that system. Now, you get the system as it is. Right, So this is not, uh, eventually, if you owned it, you could make the improvements. But I want to be transparent. What we're talking about is buying what exists right now. The SEU is about generating something new. It is about producing clean electrons. That's at the core of this, is new renewable energy on the grid that is more resilient and reliable. Those two things do not have to be in conflict with each other. We could choose to do the SEU and uh, municipalization, which is going to probably be a decade. Uh, of a discussion and a battle. And if the public decides they want to go with traditional municipalization and we had an SEU, we would have a lot of clean energy generation already in our community. And if the community decided they did not want to go with a municipal electric utility, kind of the formal takeover process, we would still have clean energy in our community from an SEU. So the two aren't in conflict, but they also don't have to both be done together.
I understand. So just to make sure I understand you correctly, mm -hmm. the voting or authorizing an SCU would not close the door to an MEU? It would not close the door. It also, though, does not authorize an MEU, a municipal electric utility, a takeover, a condemnation sort of process and proceeding. That's because we have to figure out what that costs. Then we need to go to the voters and say, this is what we would likely be offer, offering to purchase all of this existing equipment. Do you want us to do that? So that process, if we choose to go down a traditional municipalization effort, likely is going to lead to two public votes. One authorizing us to start the process, and then one after the court proceeding when we know the actual price, authorizing us to actually pay that. Go debt finance, do what we need to do to buy out if we go that path. So the SEU and the MEU are legislatively separate and when you go to the polls in November you will only see the SEU on the ballot. Thank you. Thank you for making that distinction. Absolutely. Would an SEU be run out of the Office of Sustainability and Innovations? Most likely no. So this is a it would be a municipal utility and we already run municipal utilities in the city of Ann Arbor. We have a stormwater utility, a water utility, a water recovery utility and so it makes the most sense for that the, the SEU to mirror those existing utilities. That likely means it'll be in public services with very close connection to our office around the sustainability programs and services. But this becomes a utility and you need to operate a utility in the way that standards indicate you operate a utility with standard billing and financing and cost of service studies. So we're helping form it. We're definitely very strongly behind a lot of the creation of the SEU and we will be supporting it. But no, this would have a utility, a, a person at the top reporting through council like our existing utility structures. Okay, thank you. How does the SEU align with Ann Arbor's A20 goals? Yeah, the SEU is in strong alignment. Because A20 sets the goal of our community being powered with 100% renewable energy and it focuses on resilience and it focuses on electrification and it focuses on energy efficiency uh, and it focuses on equity and job creation, the SEU is kind of right there touching upon all of those different values. And it's not about, it's not about owning, I've said this a few times, but I think it's worth it. It's not about owning the distribution system. I often say the grid is not the goal for A20. Clean energy is the goal within A20. And this allows us to take investments and put them directly towards generating clean, reliable, resilient power, as opposed to focusing those resources on owning how you move those electrons. That's not really the game that we're in, in OSI, we're in a, a renewable, resilient game, and that's that's why the SEU is pretty exciting. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that. I appreciate that. Where would you send residents who are looking to learn more? Well, good news is we have a website with a lot of information on it. It's www.a2gov.org backslash A2SEU, and they can find fact sheets, short videos, longer videos. Uh, they can find detailed information. They can dive deep. We've got upcoming public events that folks can attend and ask their questions. And I would say always, uh, if you're sitting on something that you need more information on, please reach out to the office. We want to make sure, number one, when voters walk into the ballot box or when they vote at home, that they have the information they need to make the decision, whatever decision that might be. But it's fact-based information. That's great. Thank you. Is there anything else that you wanted to share with our audience before we head out? No, oh, thank you for the question. I think I would just say gratitude to this community broadly for being open to this kind of an innovative concept. And the SEU at its core, each individual thing we're proposing has been done. Right? There, there's nothing novel about offering on-bill finance to do energy efficiency. There's nothing novel about investing in solar. What's novel about the SEU is we want to do it all together. And I think Ann Arbor is a really special place that could be a national and potentially even international example of what it looks like when we see, we, we take it very seriously, our commitment to equitable climate action. So I'm excited to see what comes, whatever it is, even if this doesn't pass, we are still here in OSI, we will keep pushing and we will hit that A20 goal. That's fantastic. I love the optimism that you have for our community and the mm -hmm. way that you, you see things. I really appreciate it. And oh, thank, thank you, you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for all you do. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> You can learn more about the sustainable energy utility at a2gov.org slash a2seu and more about A20 by visiting a20.org. Have a question you want to ask to a sustainability expert in the city of Ann Arbor? Let us know at sustainability at a2gov.org. This has been Greenlight. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you again soon.